Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today the fun begins. We get to start embroidering and embellishing all of the um, floral component of our pot this week. Now I'm just gonna grab my beads because I think we need beads. I'm thinking, so we've got these little little ones here, these little marks on this piece of embroidery, they would be good for the seed beads. I think they would look great on there as little buds. Now we either do them in the red, pinky red, or a green, but I don't know if I've got a green seed bead that really matches. It's a little bit too turquoisey and would look odd, I think. Yeah, that's don't have a lot of green as such, so I think they're going to be red buds. Now, the actual flowers themselves, that's not a bad little bead as well. Maybe we can merge in with it. Have a play with colours. That could work. Let's have a play. Now, we need that annoying little, that annoying little bead needle, Reginald, where are you, you mean little, don't just throw it in there, girl, wind it up properly. I can hear my grandmother going, hmm. original if you are wondering what I'm talking about a few videos back I decided to call that needle Reginald I'm not sure if this is Reginald no that's not Reginald he's that real fine nasty little bead knee that's him he's uh, difficult to work with he bites all the time and he's been called regional. All right, come on, buddy. Play fair today. Don't hurt me. I should put a thimble on and then Reginald wouldn't be so vicious. But we don't because we're impatient and we're a bull at a gate and we just want to get into it. So I just spin my work a little bit so that I can get a good angle. I've got Reginald ready. So let's do first these little bits here. Thanks to everyone who went across and watched the um, lecture on the Wagger quilt. I'm so pleased you found it very interesting <clears throat> I'm still thinking about it it's still in my mind okay let's grab one of these little beads yep that'll work so I'll get that stitched in I'm still convinced the next prompt's going to be mushrooms. A lot of you are starting to agree with me. What else would be at the bottom of the garden? I should be running a wager on it. What would the odds be? <laughs> oh, goodness. How do we manage to bring gambling into our stitching? That's just bad, bad news. So we won't be doing that. All right, so that's one down. So far, Reginald's behaving himself and he hasn't bitten me. He's a feisty little needle. He's sharp, he's fine, and he's quick. Well, sort of goes with the description, doesn't it? Number 
to. So if you don't do any beading and you're a little bit wary of it, give it a go because I think you'll find, I know it's slow and it takes a while, but if you're getting into slow stitch, you would have realized that it's just slow. And that's the whole point. If it takes you a month, if it takes you a day, it's just what it is. It is what it is. It's all about the journey. And even if you never get the piece finished, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. It's just stitching. And beading is really good to enhance your pieces. Plus they're fun to collect too from old jewellery that you can break down. But try and find fine jewellery, not real chunky. That's pretty good. Do we put another one there or do I do something else there? Um, I might put another one there actually. I'm going to do a little visible stitch on the way over there because that could be the whole thing this this seed bead is actually the start of a flower so the flower is coming out of the seed bead is what i'm thinking Yep, that's pretty good. Now where else are these little guys? Okay, so there's a couple more over there. This might be a bit boring viewing. So definitely pick up some work, sit down, make yourself a coffee or a tea or a cold beverage. We're going to be here a while doing this beading. Or... If you're part of the, the group that like to do housework and listen to me rabbit on, go for it, ladies. You're better than me. I just avoid it. I tend not to look in the direction of the housework. No, I've got to do some today, for goodness sakes. It's just, I've got to clean the bathrooms today. Otherwise, before you know it, the week is gone again. You know what I mean? It's, oh, no, today is the day. So once I finish this video, I'm going to get up, walk straight to the cleaning products and put in a mighty effort. Well, yes, I will put in a mighty effort. Does that not catch? Oh yeah. Careful, Reginald, you slid right past my nail then. Just settle, fella. Just be... Be good. I don't mind any of the other needles. I can handle them. It's this little, little coot that bites. And last time I tangoed with young Reginald here, he bit me good. It went down the nail. It's not his fault not his fault he wasn't intentional he's not a vindictive fellow <laughs> I know when I first mentioned Reginald's name a few of you popped up and said you had a Reginald as well you would got your beading needle out and called him Reginald <laughs> oh my goodness I think we've all got a Reginald apologies to any Reginalds out there Okay, that one's done. Lovely. Now I might scoot down to the bottom there. Not sure how much stitching will go into these flowers because they're so fine. I'll have to have a good think about the um, the threads because I don't want to overpower, you know, overpower the flower and lose the detail of it. 
That's why slightly bigger prints are probably a little bit better. But we can certainly do highlight stitching so that if you were to run your fingers across it, you would feel that there's something, you know, there. I really want to, oh, look, I'm heading off on a tangent now. I really want to stitch up in here too. Goodness sakes. Every time I look at this piece, I see somewhere else where I could do something. I don't know if it'll ever be finished. It's going to have to be enough. All right, so now I'm just going to scoot down to this point here. There's actually quite a few on this little piece. doesn't take too long 11 minutes to stitch on these few beads I guess that does take a while now I've dropped my thread Now, taking into account that this is a very old piece of um, embroidery that was never embroidered, I'm not going to be able to wash this piece so that those lines were to disappear. So if you are using something similar, just be aware that you will see your little grey lines, especially if you're doing beading. But I'm okay with that because that also tells me how that piece came to be. So I'm not too worried about that. It's all part of the story of the, the cloth. There's uh, all the components that went into this collage. It's the same with the overcast stitch that I use to pin down. Um, pieces to the you know you could go to the degree of matching threads to the fabric so that you don't see those overcast stitch I'm not too concerned I was in the beginning when I first started doing this style of work but I got to the point where I actually liked the story of how it came together just as much as the final product so when I look at other people's work, I really like to see how they constructed it. So to see the overcast stitch around a piece of floral fabric, I really enjoy that because I can now see the journey that was taken to create it. Gee, I'm sounding really artistic. But you know what I mean. We all will go to these shows when they'll have an exhibition of quilts or embroidery or whatever it is and we stand there and we look into the piece and really try to work out <clears throat> what happened in the creation of the piece. So I really like the look of the overcast stitch around the embroidery. I think it just adds just another layer of detail so if you're new or you haven't had a play yet and you're considering it and you're learning still studying the more stitches you can show on your work I think the more beautiful your work is that's my theory the more interesting it becomes <clears throat> It sort of gives it a primitive quality. Like, like I'm, I'm over the fine embroidery that I grew up doing, you know, where it was so precise. And the stress that came with making it precise and unpicking it to make it precise. Sorry, Grandma, but that's gone now. That's great when you're learning your technical skills. And even then, I'm still breaking the rules as some of you will 
point out regularly to me. Good on you, Corinne. You've done that stitch wrong again. <laughs> and as I say, it's guaranteed. I think um, once you learn your stitches, then you can play with them. And I think that's the beauty of this style of work is we get to do all these unusual things with our threads and fabrics and laces and beads and okay I think that's all of them yep so we do have some little dots at the top of those flowers. I might come back to them because I want to sort of see how the flowers themselves come together because I've got two options. We can continue with the beads or we satin stitch them in. I'm tempted to do the beads, you know, it'll take a while and maybe too long. Let's get back down to this little guy here. Um, so my theory is, that we bead them up. How would I incorporate the two? Let's just get a little bit of this wool as well. I just have a feeling I could do the three might be a bit adventurous, but what the hang, hey? Beating would just be boring. Maybe. Do we do the throat of the flower petal in that leading to beads? Hey, let's hey, let's go. So what I'm thinking, do we I'm thinking I might do a scattering of stitches all coming down to the point of that petal. Like so. See, it's just got like that dark little throat. I think if I would then went around the petal, in that it would become very crowded and ominous looking. I might handle it, but I'm just going to do the base keeps coming under. I think I'm just going to work the base of the petal at the moment like it's shading. Like a little dark throat. So, I think it's that shaded effect. And then, yeah. yeah, I really think that if I go around that. See, my concern is that the beads will lose the shape of the petal. But I think if I take my time and place them really carefully, I should be able to keep the shape of that round roundness there. 
Let's have a go. These are very big beads, but so it is a bit concerning that they will be too bulbous for it. But I might be able to pull it off. Let's have a go. They're a little bit on the cheap side too, these beads. Their um, consistency is not real good in sizing. So that might be a benefit. And I'm thinking we do... few big ones and then taper it out to the little guys we'll see Get some bigger guys in here can always come back through with that wool and stitch in amongst it all as well just to fill it all in if it does feel a bit gappy but we'll see how we go oh, I'm starting to heat up the sun's starting to come out see they're very big I might just bring a couple of these in just to soften it a little these are really small and I think they'll be good to fill in around it yeah that's good that just breaks it a little bit That extra stitch makes all the difference when you're beading. Two stitches in every bead. I know it's laborious and you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, could I be bothered? But do it. It really holds your bead where you want it to go as well. It really tethers it down, so to speak. Yeah, these little guys are really good. So I think it'll be a smattering of the big, just unthreaded, a smattering of the big guys through the center of the petal and then backfill it with the little fellas. This is gonna take a while. <laughs> oh boy. What else would I be doing? Yeah, I like that. And I'll come up quite staggered because I might decide to either change, change the colors of the beads as I get to the tip, or I could even bring in um, even these beads are weird shapes. Look at the size difference there. I've got a really tiny one and a big one. They're all stitching in. Um, I could find a, a wool or a cotton to finish the tip. I don't think I will, but I think I'm going to enjoy seeing the glistening That these beads are going to offer the petal let's try a bigger one now if I did change colors it might be a case of bringing in a little pearl or something at the top yeah that's good I'm happy with that just a few random big ones in amongst so it looks like a little cluster. Come on, Reginald, hang on to the cotton. 
What are you doing, son? I might zoom in now so you can have a closer look at the cluster. How's that? Could go all wobbly and fuzzy. Tends to do that when we get our hands too close to the camera. See how it just did it then? Don't know why Apple's gone and done that to us all. But anyway, I can always zoom back out if it gets a bit too annoying. Just popping a little guy in next. So I'm sort of just <clears throat> working my way around the petal. That hole is a little bit uneven, so it's not going to let me put the needle back through there. Do I do a big one next? I'll do a little one. It's sort of a fine line between keeping the beading fine enough that it looks like it's meant to be a petal and not being too chunky. And I think the bigger of those beads might get a bit chunky looking. If I can get the one petal done then you'll, I'll be able to carry on with that. I'm just sort of thinking of bringing in another colour, to be honest, towards the tip. Reginald, you've dropped the thread again. Come on, buddy. Stay focused. Okay, let's get this little bead. I'm cheating, I put two on. I usually don't do too many at one time because I like to control where the beads lay. But being that I'm in the center of that petal, I'm feeling a bit more confident that I can lay those two down and it won't be too much trouble for me for the losing the shape. Now see how we're getting to the tip of that petal. Do we bring in another colour? Definitely not going to do embroidery, as in using thread. I think that wouldn't look quite right. <clears throat> but we have an opportunity, maybe, to bring in another colour. whether I have another colour and it has to be a really little bead because it's, we're getting smaller. But it could be a way of getting a little bit of light to the end of the bead, uh, to the end of the petal. So whether I've got anything that No, I don't think I want it to be stark. They're too purple. No, I think that would look too mishy, mishmashy. No. Mm. Um, let's have a look in the pearls. Maybe there's something. There's those tiny guys. I don't think you'd even notice them. Just having a look.
They're too big. Could put gold. Could put brown. Could go to a gold. No, it's light. It's got to bounce light off. No. Hmm. I don't know, guys. I don't think there's anything. No, you definitely don't want those colours. Let me take the camera up because it's probably going in and out of focus. <clears throat> hmm. What's that there? That's an unusual little fellow. And he's tiny. He's like a brassy. Let's have a little look. <clears throat> He's like a brassy. I don't know. I don't know. It might be a bit of a dead colour. Like. Uh, no. Like it would work. No, it sort of picks up the colour that's in the um, leaves of this piece. But it's like it, I've got this glistening little petal and then it's just come to a blur end. Does that make sense? Maybe I do need to consider thread. I sort of feel like I need a pop of something. work so I've got my needle and thread there for the beads let's put Reginald up into the fabric here before I he's in my mouth and he shouldn't be there I'm wondering if I can do some French knots or them colonial knots up around that tip in this pale Corally pink. So I sort of feel like I want light to bounce around at the tip of the flowers. I think I mentioned that about six times already. So I'm wondering if I can nestle in. Four. I'll do four to get a bit of height to the knot. Yes, 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 yes. This is what we want. So it was, see, when I was talking about not doing a thread, in my head I was thinking like a, uh, a straight stitch, you know, long and short stitch, just something along that lines. I'm going to do these knots. And that'll give me the texture. It will taper down because it's slightly, one, two, three, four, a slightly smaller knot than the bead that's already coming along. I've got the color transition happening. I've gone from that real pearly red. Let me zoom in so you can see. So I've gone from that really big pearly red to the clearer, more translucent little bead. And now we're finishing off with this crochet cotton with a knot. I can sit it right in on those lines to disguise the fact that they're there. Is that three? Four. I can even control the knot to some degree in size. So as I get more to the tip, I could probably go down to 
maybe three wraps or something. I can still bury the odd bead in amongst it. So my transition can still be quite gentle as we get to the tip of this little petal. I should pull out my book where I have used this little piece of embroidery before and see what I did with that. I'm pretty sure I did bead it, but I can't remember the combination of which I used. I might put a knot down there and start bringing in. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I now know how to do my flowers. See, I'm right up at the peak now. I might just do one, two, three, just so that my knot's getting a little bit smaller. Don't you come out of there. Whoops, that one's way out. So push him back in. Beautiful. Really happy with that. It's going to make for a very interesting little petal. So I guess the last thing to figure out, uh, that's four, we only want a little one. I might just do two, just to sneak it in the top there. might just figure out now the green shouldn't be too hard i've got plenty of greens and i'm guessing it'll just be a stem stitch unless i can think of something genius so where's a little tray we need that cotton, we're going to need that guy, and we should be finished with the seed beads, so we pop them away. Where's my tray gone? We're going to need him. Let me zoom back up, my goodness sakes, I'll be making you feel sick. We didn't use those, so they can go away. Now, so I've got that threaded that threaded so there's my needles now i do need to finish reginald's thread off he's sort of left in midair so let's get him squared away i guess the last thing will be once i've beaded it do i still outline it if i feel i guess the um, <clears throat> petal has lost its integrity that nice curved shape maybe i'll need to do a couched loop around it and we could be as tricky as using even a chocolate and coming around the flower a fraction out from it like exaggerating it we could tuck it in close we'll see i'll get the construction of the petal done and then we'll see if it's lost its integrity as a petal. See when I wrap that around there? It's like you do a watercolour painting, you pick up a black pen and you then just draw in subtle shapes so that the eye still sees, you know, what you want it to see. Not even that chocolate's the right colour, but it could be a gold or something like that. But we'll see. But I think that's good. The end three little beads, I don't know about them yet. We'll worry about them another day. But I do want to have a look at the green. What are we going to use? Yeah, I like that. This is variegated, so that's going to give me all sorts of colours. There's a scrap and a bee needle. And a knot. 
not. Ha! Oh, it's meant to be. So let's, being that it's really thick thread, I might even be able to get, oh, nothing. A split running stitch or something along those lines where I go back into itself. I don't want that typical running stitch look. I need to come from a center point too. That's another thing. I might just do a bit of plumbing here so it looks like this branch is coming from somewhere. And then go through the previous stitch. So it feels like it's all one and not showing the lines of stitch. Does that make sense? I'm not even making sense. Let me zoom in so you can see. So I've just taken my stitch owl, bit me, down into where that petal is. So it's going past where the design of the fabric is. And I'm putting my needle into the previous stitch because I don't want that classic hole you see in threads when you're doing, say, just a normal straight stitch. I want it to feel a little bit more all in one. Yeah, that's looking good. It's nice and chunky too because it's got a handle this seed beads these seed beads because they're quite quite big really so it's got to look like they're meant to be all together so i think a wool is the way to go yeah definitely okay so i need to get back down the bottom there so i could end it off or i'm just going to weave back down sorry grandma i would have should have ended that but that's all good we're there and now i'm going to try and merge this line into there This is such a crowbar of a needle. It's really not the right one, but that's that one over there is better with the red thread in it. There we go. We're off and running. Oh, that's crooked. Yeah, you do need to see. I looked up at the TV to see what the time was, and I didn't take note of where that needle was going in so therefore I got more of a crooked crooked looking branch it's got to be more there look how bent that needle is how did I bend a crowbar <laughs> I think it's the heat I heard someone say on a video that it's the heat from our hands using the needle just weakens the metal so they just bend. I'm now heading out this way. See, the stem is so important because if your flower petals are really chunky and then you have a really fine stem, it sort of doesn't make sense because in nature it wouldn't hold, wouldn't hold the plant up. So I think this is going to work. I'm really happy with the colour too. So now so that's going to be, I could have couched it. Would be another way to do it. Would have been easier when I get to this curve up here. But I think if I take my time and reduce the stitch size, I should be able to get that curve. It will be a little jagged, won't be as swish as a couch stitch, but that's okay. I'm going to run out of thread. Let's end you off. What you could do 
to get that finish is I could change to a different thread. Mm, now we're getting tricky. Whether I can match something. And we treat that like a tentacle. Let's have a little look. Let's see what we got. I've got two, three finer threads here. Let's come back out a little. So what we could do is change to a different Hello, fudge. Hmm? I haven't had fudge visit for ages. Fudge is feeling the cold, I think. He has breakfast and goes straight back to bed. Do you blame him? I'm just looking for a needle that's not such a crowbar. The animals are getting restless. My husband must be getting ready to come out for breakfast because the dogs are now behind me on the patio wrestling and they were sitting at the bedroom. So waiting patiently for Gaz to come. And now Fudge is here, which makes me think there's some activity because he'd be coming around thinking it's food time so I'm just going to let that lay roughly there so what I'm doing is making a tentacle look so it'll get real fine on that but I need a little bit more thread do I do the variegated coloured thread why not let's get rid of you I don't need you put you in the pot you in the pot I just cut the thread. What happened to it? Must have wrapped it. There it is. I think this will work a treat. I'll just make it a little bit more interesting. So there's these little tentacles coming off of the. So now I'm just going to get that thread out a little bit, a bit of slack. Then come up here. I just take my time. In stitching down this little guy so I've got two different green threads happening here degree of difficulty being it's a curve is sort of like the birdcage would have noticed yesterday I just stitched it out in the big stitches and then went back and couched it down it was really quite quick you can't really do that when you've got curves you've got to take your time and Get your curves just right. Plus, don't make your stitches too far apart. I'm sure you know all this. But if you're a newbie, you might just be sitting there on the end of your seat, absolutely glued to this riveting viewing. <laughs> And the rest of you are now thinking, I really need to go and mop the floor and clean the kitchen benches. You're starting to think about your day as we're coming to the end of our hour together. And there we go. That's good. We've gone from the wall down to a finer cotton. Yeah, brilliant. So I'm just going to bring my overcast stitch up here. 
and then this guy pick up one of those big needles which will just get me up where I need it it's a bit fiddly only because it's curved bring my needle up here lay it down go back up here have just a little bit of slack out to work with and I might preempt myself and bring that up there okay it's fiddly I just slowly lay down some little stitches to hold it where I want it When you're holding your breath to do some stitches and then you drop your thread. Frustrating. It's all good. Okay. It's like I'm down to the last few elements of this project and I'm trying to make them as complicated as possible to get my enjoyment factor. It's like my last ride on the merry-go-round, but we're going to go around 20 times before the end of the day. There we go. Took a bit to get that into position. I guess that tip here is just to follow the lines of the embroidery don't worry too much about the thread just stay on those lines and the, it'll just fall into place as a nice curve because you've followed the designers lines now I can just bring that down a fraction is a little jagged but it's not too bad there we go now I can come up here and start laying down this one well, I've got plenty of homework, don't I? Heading into the weekend with plenty of stitching. That's a good place to be. Should really be putting that stitch down into the fabric it's sitting out here I might do that next before I get ahead of myself it's a bit jagged there it's not too bad let's bring him through the big guy the original thread pick up the needle and couch him down Now I can just pull that a fraction. I can hear my husband coming. So that's perfect timing. I think we've got one more stitch after this. Yep, there we go. That's worked out really well. And that brings me to the end of everything I need to figure out in order to finish this piece. So I'll see how I go. I'm hoping I'll get
plenty of time to do some stitching but if I don't I guess I just come back to you guys and we carry on I've got a bit of a knot thing happening here don't be like that there we go it's a hell of a mess back there that's what happens when you're doing two threads you can hear pepper she's all excited okay now I just drop the needle for goodness sakes it's all good just finish this little guy off So that's all of the green threads now secure. <clears throat> all right, now, there we go. Don't know where that needle went. I think it fell through to the floor. I better find that. All right, we have a plan. We have some nice big beady petals. We've got a tentacle on the end of our stem. So I can feel confident that I can carry on with that. And I think that's going to look quite pretty through there. I still haven't figured out what I'll do there. I'm thinking it'll be a knot, maybe a bead, but we'll see. All right, guys, you guys have a great day. I hope you have some stitching to carry on with. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.